Hello everyone, I'm Susan and I'm here this morning to share with you a beautiful recipe. We're going to make chocolate mousse with strawberry cream. And uh, I remember when I was a child, I always loved ice cream and I always loved chocolate, chocolate mousse particularly. But in those days it had cream and it had butter and it had all the things in it that perhaps being a raw uh, foodie, we don't tend to add to our food these days. So I'm really excited about showing you another way of having a healthy dessert without um, the butter and the cream and those things. Uh, getting back to how I became so interested and passionate about raw food is that I saw a, uh, a video clip on the internet with Mimi Kirk and Mimi Kirk is a lady in the United States who is 75. She looks all of about 50 and she's been a raw foodie since she was 65 and she talks about the connection between uh, our creator God and how the foods grown how the foods collected how the food is prepared in our kitchen with love and our intention of uh, creating something beautiful for ourselves and it's really about learning to love ourselves and I think in my case I recognize that it was an element of uh, in my life that didn't exist I don't think I've ever truly loved myself until more recently when I um, have started to put myself first particularly around what I eat and how I'm living and I think that there is definitely a connection when we um, when I trained in in the States recently as a gourmet chef raw chef I was given a little uh, a little token to put on my cap and it said I am loved and I thought oh this is this is new agey this is uh, something that I'm not really feeling that I'm in line with and uh, then it was explained to me that if I don't love myself and I don't value uh, what I'm eating and my value my body so that I'm able to serve others that um, we really are starting behind the eight ball so in my case I thought well wow, here's lesson number one because I don't think I've ever truly loved myself and this has been a little bit of a doorway for me and a glimpse into how little I've loved myself over the years. And so this raw food um, sort of program that I, I've implemented into my own life has, has just been a, a real revelation because I really do feel uh, very connected. And I think our emotions are particularly important around all of this because if we are in a uh, an emotional state which we really are better keeping away from the kitchen because our food is not going to taste too good and uh, all of those emotions are going to be in our food so I'm finding that um, even doing these programs uh, for YouTube that I am still dealing with having to be before a camera in my face and I'm finding that really hard at times and I'm thinking just let's get this over with let's rush through this and I think that there's an emotional injury there for me around just relaxing and realizing I've got the whole morning in which to do it so I um, just wanted to share those few things with you before we start and realize that there's a lot more this isn't really so much about the food it's it's more about what's going on for me emotionally while I'm I'm presenting these uh, beautiful recipes to you and in honouring those recipes, I'd just like to thank the Institute of Light because the recipes that I'm using are largely uh, have been produced by them and I was taught to use them while I was there and so I would like to acknowledge the Institute of Light which is at uh, Fort Bragg in uh, Northern California. And I'd also like to thank our camera people. We've got Lena and we've got Igor here this morning. Thank you both very much for... Uh, being willing to come and <laughs> help me with this presentation so uh, I'm really grateful for that and uh, I, I, I just think that this whole um, this whole roof raw food uh, uh, program for me has been hugely beneficial because I just see it's really not about the food there's just so many layers of my own emotional injuries that are unraveling as I'm making the food, as I'm eating the food, as I'm loving myself. 
So, and, and also I have a lot of joy that comes through uh, in preparing food for others, but I realise in the past there have been some injuries around that because I was wanting feedback, I was wanting acknowledgement, I was looking for love, I guess, from others. And whereas now I'm feeling like I'm doing it for myself, probably for the first time ever, and uh, I have joy in, in offering to others and I have a great desire that as many people as possible out in the world can and learn about raw food and possibly then they have the opportunity of considering introducing more of it into their diet. Uh, the ideal is about an 80-20%, so 80% raw, 20% cooked. Some people go all the way and, and eat 100% raw. It's very difficult to do that because many of the, the ingredients that we add to our recipes are strictly perhaps not entirely raw. So I feel fairly comfortable around that and I just think we can, we can use what we have in our refrigerator. We want to keep this simple. We really don't want to be running out buying expensive and exotic ingredients to put into our recipes mm. because that's not really necessary. Uh, today I am um, going to just make two desserts because when we become a raw foodie we think that it's just salads and soups and smoothies and uh, and probably a bit of fruit and that's about it and I think that a lot of people find that difficult long term and, and, and um, very hard to sustain and so if we have a few little delicacies and delicious uh, additions to our raw food diet we we can add those when we feel the need and if we observe those needs it's usually emotionally driven <laughs> I certainly have noticed that in myself that if I'm wanting some dessert there's usually something going on emotionally as well but it, saying that I think that it is nice to be able to um, perhaps have a frozen dessert in the freezer which we can bring a piece out of if bring a piece out of the freezer and um, have if we so desire or we have some guests or a special occasion. It's really nice to be able to enjoy those delicacies. Now this morning we're going to make a chocolate mousse with strawberry cream and it is a really simple recipe. It's a delicious recipe and it's largely healthy. So we, we're going to start off with our blender here and it's quite unusual because we use avocados in this recipe and the avocados are going to be our, our fat content, largely our fat content. And uh, of course avocados are one of the, one of the great um, foods that we've been provided with on this planet that support almost every single nutrient and value. In fact they do say that people can actually live on avocados, which I'm not sure whether that's correct or not, but uh, that it supplies almost every food and uh, every, every vitamin, mineral, everything that we need. So the body needs, so, but it does have um, quite a high fat content, but it has a natural um, good fat. We have good fats as well as um, poor fats to choose from in our diet. And avocados and nuts and seeds and those things are hugely beneficial for our bodies. Um, whereas dairy products, um, fats from perhaps meat and those, um, those foods are not so, it's not so good. Um, olive oil is another fat that we can, we can look at and use. Coconut, coconuts is another fat. So these are natural fats that, that uh, God's really provided for us to just go out and pick, and pick in the garden or pick in the orchard and we have these really healthy fats. So these are the two avocados that I'm going to be putting in the recipe. And then we're going to add some cacao powder. Now cacao is coming from the cocoa bean and uh, it's nice to have free trade with this because we don't want to be um, perhaps buying it out of Africa or somewhere where they use children to collect the cacao bean. So South America seems to be one of the better places for cacao, but if you don't want to use cacao, it's very strong. It's a very strong chocolatey flavor, and some people find it a little overwhelming. So if you, you can use some um, carob is another choice that you can have. Some people use cocoa, but cocoa is probably not a particularly 
um, healthy product but some people use that so today we're using cacao powder and we're going to add to that we're going to add some rapadura sugar now this is quite a quite a caramelly flavor and it's also um, it's an unprocessed sugar cane but we can use any sweetener there's a lot of sweeteners that are available and we can use we could use honey or we could use agave or we could use maple syrup or other sweeteners in this particular recipe <coughs> uh, it's it's recommended that we use the unprocessed sugar cane cane but um, it's, it does carry quite a caramely flavour. So you'll notice with all the sweeteners that you add to your uh, recipes that it gives a different flavour. So this is a particularly caramely one which sort of adds and supports the chocolate. Then we're going to have a tablespoon of vanilla. And vanilla again comes from a bean and it's a beautiful product. It has a divine smell. We use the, the pure extract rather than the essence because the essence has been processed and heated. So when you go to your supermarket, try and keep your eye out for the vanilla extract rather than the uh, vanilla essence. Uh, then we're going to use some cinnamon and we're going to use some salt. So the cinnamon goes in and so does the salt. And basically, this is the recipe. So you can't believe that it could be so simple. Um, so we have all of those there and we can blend this up and it'll take about two seconds. <laughs> Give it a little bit of help here. You can put this in the food processor and it may actually be better in the food processor than the blender. I've put it in the blender this morning but it sometimes needs a little bit more food. It's just needing a little more help because it, um, it is in the food, in a food processor it would probably tend to go around a little quicker. Um, but you can use either and if you don't have any of those things you could, you could mash your avocados and just add the other ingredients to it and perhaps give it a bit of a whisk and you have a nice smooth chocolatey mousse anyway so don't feel you necessarily have to have all these gadgets we can so that's looking really yummy and delicious so we have a beautiful chocolate mousse there and it's quite thick if you notice from the avocado so what we're going to do is we're going to um, put that into our mix this with some strawberry cream. Now the strawberry cream is kind of fun because I'm going to use some frozen strawberries this morning and I'm going to put them through the juicer. I have a, lucky enough to have a champion juicer and if any of you have got juices most of them I think with a blank screen underneath you can make ice cream and all you need is frozen fruit. So we could have any flavour of uh, ice cream this morning or cream this morning that we would like to use. I thought strawberries would be kind of pretty yummy with the, with the chocolate, so we're going to have strawberries, but you could have raspberries are beautiful, but you could have frozen oranges or you could have pineapple or you could have um, mixed berries. All of those things are delicious with, with chocolate mousse. So. Sometimes uh, they nearly always ask me for some ice cream. And this 
need to wear our glasses. And that looks pretty, pretty gorgeous, I think. So now we're going to just do it like a little parfait. So I'm going to use some chocolate out of here. And we just put it in the glass. And then it would be really nice to put some some ice cream or some strawberry in. So we're going to do a little layer of strawberry. And we can make this as perfect as possible or we can just plop it in and it sort of has a nice rugged look about it. So there's really no desire to to necessarily be perfect around it, but if you if that is something you'd like, well you can do that. But I think it's quite fun to just have a rugged a rugged appearance in your glass. So we're going to put the chocolate back over the strawberry. And this is going to be absolutely delicious. And when we think that all these things are, have come from nature, have been provided for us, there's just so much to be grateful for, isn't there? It's just, uh, just really beautiful. And the, the flavors and the smells, and you know, when we're making food, we can always decide what taste would we like, what flavor would we like, in other words, or what smells are we feeling like today. So the food has a, has a real, when it's fresh like this, there's a, an absolute aroma that comes from it. And it's just glorious. And you realize how contaminated we have made so much of our food through processing, because you don't seem to get those gorgeous smells. I can just smell that that strawberry is just coming up out of that glass like nothing. It's just my mouth's watering thinking about it. It's just beautiful. Yeah. So we put some more strawberry in there. Now we just have finish off with a little bit of chocolate. With your chocolate mousse, you could add uh, there'd be some varieties. You could change this a little bit. You could you could put some orange essence or orange extract and some orange. Um, zest in it or you could do it with chili chocolate and chili is delicious um, so use your creativity when you when you're using um, these recipes that i give you uh, the whole idea is to give you a basic recipe and then you can do your own exploring of, of uh, how to use those recipes in a in a creative way so this could become a tart you could make a, um, a chocolate mousse tart, which just means you do a crust for it and then you add this. You might do some layers of banana with it, because banana and chocolate can be really delicious, or you might use another fruit. Um, so there's so many different ways of, of utilizing a mousse to make it different each time you make it. So we're looking at something really yummy and delicious here and, and largely healthy. I mean, the only thing that's in it that's possibly mightn't pass the test of, of real health would be that would be the, the uh, Rapadura, the Rapadura sugar. But you could have honey or something else which might be a little more um, healthy friendly, health friendly. Yeah, so I just put some, now I'm just chopped up a few fresh strawberries as well to go on the top just to make it even more delicious. And we have like a beautiful, it's almost like a parfait here, but we could use any sort of fruits of this at all. So keep that in mind, whatever you've got in the garden or whatever's in um, what's growing at the time. I think this is really quite important that we tend to eat with the seasons rather than be trying to produce uh, food that is out of season and has come thousands of kilometers across the ocean in order to provide us with cherries in winter and all of these sort of things. So there we have our chocolate strawberry cream. <laughs> Yum. <laughs>